Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Psychology 1100 Lifespan Development. And in it, we're looking at Chapter 9 in our text, and that's on late adulthood. Now, first we're going to talk about physical development in late adulthood. Now, this is the time period that starts around 65 years old. And probably the most significant thing here is if you look down on the bottom left, you'll see that in the United States, the average life expectancy for a man is around 76 years right now. Well, 100 years ago, it was 30 years less. So we're talking about 1910. Guys could expect to live to only 46. It's, it's, you know, it's crazy. We've made huge changes. And it also lets you know that sometimes maybe the body, you know, we're not necessarily well adapted to living that much longer. Um, but uh, we have better health care. We've got better water. We've got better diets, mostly. Uh, women tend to live longer than men in the United States for several reasons. They, uh, men develop heart disease earlier than women. Men are more susceptible to certain forms of cancer than women. I like this one. Men are more prone to engage in reckless behavior, even men in, you know, in late adulthood, which can account for their shorter life expectancy. Also, men use less, less preventive health care. So things that would easily be treatable or could be treated, like you know, prostate cancer or diabetes or certain forms of heart disease or uh, lung cancer from smoking, men are just less likely to do it. Um, also, uh, there's a lot of biological functions that uh, decline, actually starting in the late 20s. Uh, for instance, vision, we talked about presbyos uh, presbyopcasis uh, last time, that's uh, uh, a fl lack of flexibility in the eye. You can also get cataracts. Um, now that's a clouding in the lens. Interestingly, cataracts is, literally means waterfall. Um, but cataracts can also occur, as well as osteoporosis and sleep disorders. And uh, for instance, those with sleep apnea are at a higher risk for heart attacks or strokes. Anyhow, um, that's some of what's going on here. And you'll see, for instance, by the way, taking a quick look at the chart that, you know, the average life expectancy in Afghanistan still is around 45, what it was 100 years ago for the United States. Anyhow. Uh, the next thing is talking about why people get older. Now, here we got some uh, people who have managed to live a really, really long time. Uh, twins who live to be respectively 107 and 108 years old. Um, they're kind of looking like it right now. But um, now there's a lot of different theories about aging. There's programmed theories of aging that says it's a result of genetic instructions. Uh, cellular clock talks about there's a certain number of times that cells can divide. Uh, hormonal stress theory fo focuses on the endocrine system and stress hormones. Immunological theory talks about uh, the immune system declining uh, according to an internal biological clock. Cellular damage theory says that uh, changes result from um, environmental influences and also internal bodily changes. So for instance, you have a wear and tear theory that says we just get less capable of repairing ourselves. And part of that would be uh, the, th the free radical theory that says that damage to cells is caused by the accumulation of unstable molecules called free radicals. And you can, uh, so the theory goes, you could treat those by taking your antioxidants, which led a lot of people to start eating a lot of blueberries, which uh, my understanding actually really doesn't help anything. Um, and, yeah, and there's uh, the cross-linking theory that talks about the stiffening of body proteins. Um, uh, so there's a lot of different theories, and obviously nobody's answered this one uh, convincingly just yet. Um, on the other hand, we do know what people do die of, and the three majors of cause, the three major causes of death in people who are 65 and older are heart disease, cancer, and stroke. And you see those are going to be really high ones here. Um, so if this doesn't look like the right age group, because this one is showing hypertension uh, is the first. That's going to be related with some of these others. Um, let's see here. About 50% of Americans who are 65 or over suffer from high blood pressure. That's a key risk factor in heart attacks and strokes. Diabetes, also pretty common. Um, and even just silly stuff like, you know, getting injured from a fall um, can cause some serious problems, which is why, for instance, it's not a bad idea to put mats uh, on the floor and non-skid uh, flooring or uh, rails and bars just so you can avoid doing stuff that causes a lot of problems. Instead of trying to do magic things to make you live earlier, just do the things that make you not die sooner. And so even preventing a fall could be a big part of that.
All right, memory. Um, now, the interesting thing here is memory changes a fair amount, and the temporal order of memory, that's, you know, what comes before what, that can get confused, and it can lead to people having trouble distinguishing between actual and unreal events, especially things that go back and forth. Um, implicit memory can also be an issue. Implicit memory is things that you don't necessarily know that you know. You can't really describe them. And it can include things like procedural tasks, like, you know, just counting. Um, that stuff tends to remain pretty stable over time. Um, on the other hand, associative memory declines. And it's older people can have trouble judging uh, between new combinations of items on a task. Um, that can be due to problems in both binding and retrieval, perhaps due to atrophy in the frontal and temporal lobes. Now, one interesting thing here is that the um, the capacity for long-term memory is, you know, apparently limitless. Nobody has found a real upper limit for long-term memory. Um, so it can be with you forever. That's kind of nice. But the problem is long-term memory is not always accurate or intact. It's subject to distortion and bias and decay. And obviously, uh, all of those would have the a chance to accumulate over time. So that that is the risk. Okay, language development. Uh, people over 75 often exhibit a decline in reading. Uh, that's related to a decrease in working memory. In fact, the worsening of working memory, along with hearing problems, that's pretty simple, can make understanding spoken language difficult. On the other hand, if the speaker slows down, speaks a little more clearly, then comprehension increases. There's nothing magical about that. All right, the good old candle problem. Uh, this is called the Dunker candle problem by the guy who invented it. And uh, the idea here is that you got a box of matches, you got a thumbtack, you got a candle, and you got to get the candle to stick on the wall so it will burn properly. And um, a lot of things get in the way of this. Um, well, let's just take a quick look at what the answer is. Hey, look, there's the answer. You got to put the thumbtack through the box and use the box as a sort of a shelf. I've seen other arrangements, but it's the same basic idea. Uh, but decision making, um, also called executive functioning, um, uh, good working memory and processing speed all decline with age, which can make it harder for older adults uh, to come up with a, a wide variety of solutions. So older adults generally have fewer strategies, slower processing speed. Um, Anyhow, that's what goes on. Now, the idea of wisdom. Um, it says, wise people approach life's problems in a way that addresses the meaning of life. Um, well, maybe so. I'd, I'd like to think that getting old makes you wiser. I don't think there's a guarantee of that. But people who have lived to be older generally have a lot more experience to draw on, and that can make a big difference. Um, boy, this is a really funky photo because that guy is holding uh clippers that just happen to be pointing into a suitcase that's sitting far away under the woman's arm that looks bizarre um anyhow speaking of which uh one of the cognitive hazards of aging is increased distractibility yeah that i'm demonstrating for you um so older people tend to get more distracted or as a group have a higher risk of distraction uh, what's funny about it, though, is actually that can be an advantage in certain situations because distractibility can actually contribute to people seeing the big picture in situations uh, more often because they, they're looking at more things than just the one. And that can explain that is one possible reason why uh, seniors might be viewed as wiser than other people. Also, again, the idea is that you're focusing on questions in a way that reflects the meaning of life. That's going to be a tricky one, but that's uh, what it says. All right, moving right along, uh, dementia. Um, I'm sure all of you know people who have dementia. The most important thing here is to see that dementia results primarily but not exclusively from Alzheimer's. Uh, Alzheimer's accounts for a little over half of the entire group, um, but strokes are also common, and you know, there's multiple causes, Parkinson's and brain injury. Other causes can contribute to it as well. Dementia can actually result from... Uh, these are certain medications or drugs that can result from uh, particular diseases. I know that if HIV and AIDS progress to a very long extent, they can produce dementia. But anyhow, mostly Alzheimer's, but not exclusively. Okay, now the theories of social and emotional development in late adulthood. All right, um, Eric Erickson and his psychosocial theory of development in late adulthood, this is 
um, where he talks about um, ego integrity versus despair. It's his final life crisis, the last stage in his theory. And ego integrity, that's the challenge of keeping a positive attitude about life despite physical decline and also the the certainty of death. It's going to happen. And that's as, uh, being able to maintain a positive attitude despite these things as opposed to sinking into depression and despair. Uh, integrity also comes from being able to look back with pride and feelings of satisfaction, accomplishment, depression, excuse me. Despair often comes from uh, guilt, shame, and regret. So it, you want to be able to create it such that you can look back positively on what has happened. All right, next one. Uh, reminiscence is kind of a funny one here. Once upon a time, reminiscence, or just talking about, you know, in the good old days, reminiscence was actually seen as a sign of dementia. And so people who talked about it a lot, that was a problem. Um, on the other hand, depression and other psychological problems that are common in older adults, um, they can actually be relieved by having people reminisce about their lives. And so it's nice that that's something um, that can be done. So no longer considered a uh, psychopathology in its own. Psychological development. So here we have a chart of self-esteem for men, women, and an average over time. That men are in the green on the top, women are in the blue. And now please note that this makes it look like there's huge differences. Please note that the scale starts at three on the bottom and goes up to 4.1. So these are actually much smaller changes than they look like. Um, but there's a lot of theories about what happens when people get older. And um, one of them, for instance, is called dis disengagement theory. This says uh, people kind of separate and go on their own, and it's kind of a depressing thing. But in contrast to that, th that one doesn't seem to have as much support. Um, there's some activity theory that uh, older adults tend to be better adjusted when they're more active and involved in physical and social activities. Um, also, what's funny about this is one of the barriers to activity is the idea that older people need to take it easy. And, you know, not everybody really likes that. Um, let's uh, talk about a little more about the social context here. Now, very quickly, we'll talk about depression. Um, depression affects about 10% of the people over 65. And a lot of things can contribute to it. I mean, there's basic inst emotional instability, but there's changes in brain and genetics. Um, illnesses like Alzheimer's and heart disease and cancer can, can contribute to uh, adulthood. The problem is it's often undiagnosed and it's untreated in the aged. And that can be due to the fact that um, medical uh, providers are focusing primarily on physical well-being, less on mental health. On the other hand, um, if depression is not treated, it can lead to suicide. Uh, suicide rates are the highest in the people who are in late adulthood, especially older men who've lost their spouse and friends. Uh, have poor health. Um, you can also develop other uh, psychopathologies. Um, for instance, generalized anxiety disorder, which is an experiencing of feelings of dread and foreboding with no particular reason. Um, older people are, can also develop uh, phobic disorders. And that's an extreme fear that, uh, while it might be similar to a regular fear, it, it's so severe that it impairs regular functioning. The next thing here is uh, religion. Now, there's a lot to be said about this. I'm just going to say a couple of things. As, as people face the inevitability of death, so they, it's there, they know it's coming, they often become more religious. And the older a person gets, the harder it can be for them if a spouse or a partner dies. And so when they encounter this kind of suffering and, and they see the, the inevitability of death, they're often advised that they can find relief in the afterlife. And um, one study found, for instance, that older people may live longer if they attended church more than once a week. Um, the moral behavior of, of older people, along with social support received from others, that can help explain the longer lifespan of people who are actively engaged in religious life. Okay, retirement. Um, well, older adults, he says, who stay socially and civically active after retirement are often best adjusted. Um, now, one thing, if, for instance, you can move to a retirement home, that, different from a nursing home, but a retirement home. But on the other hand, one of the big challenges that's come along with that is the, is the ability to simply make new friends. And making new friends can be a concern for people who move to uh, residences. Um, on the other hand, most retirees report that they're less stressed and happier 
than before they retired, and that older adults who retired at typical retirement age and maintain their leisure activities are generally most satisfied with retirement. And let's see, I've got last slide. Um, I like this about leisure activities of retirees. So athletic and competitive outdoors, I think about the uh, the St. George Senior Games. Um, then we have the artistic, cultural, and self-expressive. And then the last one, social, I love it, is just partying. Um, now, what was I going to say about this one? Uh, just the idea that simply sitting in your chair, in your rocking chair, and resting from life's challenges is generally a prescription for depression and not living life to its fullest. And so taking a look that um, the leisure activities of retirees, again, athletics and culture and social all play a very big role. And that's what I'm going to say about um, late adulthood. Thanks for listening.